I've been making YouTube videos for almost two years now. In that time, my workflow has changed drastically, and on top of that, my hardware has seen a handful of changes as well. I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes of how I make my videos. There's a lot to cover here, so it's going to be made into a couple of videos, but for today, we're going to be looking at the hardware. I'm Jason, aka Maslin Monty, and here's the hardware I use to make my videos. Let's step back in time. The first video I ever made on this channel, I shot with an iPhone 6S. The audio from the video was a mix of what I got in the camera's recordings, as well as with the voice memos app. The audio from that video turned out so poorly that I deleted most of the shots, delayed releasing the video, and went out and bought a blue snowball to re-record everything with. At around $50, the snowball isn't a professional grade mic, but it's a huge step up from the iPhone's tiny built-in mic. Contrast that to present day, where I use a Panasonic Lumix G85 camera and a blue Yeti for 99% of my recording. The hardware wasn't an overnight upgrade though, it was a process. Between what I started with and what I've got now, a lot changed in the middle. I set out doing YouTube with the express goal of not spending too much money. It's a hobby, so as such, the production value is limited. After that first video, I unearthed my wife's Canon T3i. It's a great stills camera, but it lacks 4K and a bunch of other video-specific features. Worst of all, in the early days, it had an unreliable operator. I had never used a camera with manual controls before, so learning focus and adjusting for light was a real struggle. I'll always be haunted by the fact that my most popular video, with over 200,000 views, has a piece of dust on the lens from where I didn't know how to clean it. About six months into my channel, I moved houses and got my own dedicated office, but it's tiny and it produces a lot of echo. Suddenly, the snowball wasn't really cutting it for audio unless I had the mic right in my face, which at the time, I didn't want to show up on camera. After finding an amazing deal on a Blue Yeti, I scooped that up and my audio game stepped up with it. Just like with the Canon camera, the Yeti forced me to learn how to use it. With controls for gain and audio direction, the Yeti wasn't automatic like the Snowball, but it would produce much better results with practice. Another nice feature of the Yeti microphone is that it has live monitoring via a headphone jack. But I don't really use that feature when I make my videos, but it is nice while I'm gaming with noise-canceling headphones. Also, nice for live recording, there's a quick mute button on the mic, which is nice if you need to cough or clear your throat. For the better part of a year, my Canon T3i, Blue Yeti, and iPhone 7 Plus became my recording trio. I used the iPhone for 4K shots and shots that needed a wide depth of field, and used the Canon T3i for really shallow depth of field shots to give a kind of moody appearance, and then the Yeti I used for 100% of my audio. I lit my scenes with natural sunlight, or more often with four Philips light bulbs, two in the ceiling, two in the lamps that I can easily position around the room. Being able to control brightness and color was a huge benefit in getting great product shots. The Hue app is really easy to navigate. Getting the perfect color temperature can go a long way in the mood of a video. An interesting side note, if I shoot at anything other than shutter speed of 50, the Hue lights flicker on camera. Finally, let's talk about my new favorite toy, the Panasonic G85. And I looked at cameras for almost a year before I landed on the G85. My Canon T3i produced great results, but was limited to 1080p, so 4K in a new camera was a must. Secondly, being a team of one, I needed a monitor that I could fold out to allow me to see myself while I was recording. Nothing is worse than recording for 30 minutes only to check the footage and see that you are out of focus or a little bit to the left. It's taken me 5 or 6 videos to really nail down being happy with the results of this camera, but that process is made a whole lot easier with the companion phone app. Connecting over Wi-Fi, the app gives me more control than I was expecting. In addendum to the fold-out screen, the app works as a viewfinder and allows me to adjust most camera settings, start and stop recording, and preview low-res versions of the files I just created. For those looking for a solid vlogging camera, the G85 has in-body stabilization that works in tandem with the kit lenses stabilization. Comparing shots between the G85 and the iPhone X, you should be able to see a distinct boost in quality, especially in lower light situations. When it comes time to record myself, I set up my camera on an Amazon Basics tripod that sits on top of my desk. Between my camera and me, I have a small table that my MacBook Pro sits atop, just out of frame. With my mic connected to my Mac, I have GarageBand open to record audio and pages open to read my script off of. 
lighting setup is always the most complicated. I used to just have two lights pointed directly at me, but that created two distinct shadows, and I was getting a lot of comments that it was very distracting. Turning all the lights way up makes my studio look like a hospital, and lowering them too much causes the camera to pick up grain in the shadows. I've started to adjust color and lighting based on my clothing, and even bounce a couple of plain light bulbs off my back wall for some extra soft light. In the description, I'll link some great videos for setting up lighting. With everything set up, I do one long take of the voiceover. A 5 minute video usually takes me 25 or 30 minutes of fumbling through lines to get the finished product. For instance, look how long you are into the video, it's taken me 25 minutes and 58 seconds of recording to get to this point. I used to sit down and record voiceover without a camera on me, but that required me to have b-roll for every single thing I was talking about, and that b-roll timing was dictated by the length of my script. I record this way personally because it speeds up my workflow overall, but more on that in my next video where I talk about editing. In part 2, I'll go over my workflow for editing, the tools I use, and how I make my thumbnails. That's all for this one, let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, what kind of setups do you use if you make YouTube videos? Let me know below. I'm also including links in the description to videos that helped me pick out the gear that I use. Anyway, that's all for this one. I'm Jason, aka Maslin Monty. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.